Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Romana de Dulo? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Romana de Dulo was born in the Philippines and moved to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. There's not a lot of information available about her early years, but from what I understand, she was raised in Canada and went to school there. Romana has built up a large following by creating a website and posting on a messaging app called Telegram. Her social media presence started in July of 2020 when she launched a political party in Canada called Canada First Party. Romana has a number of unusual beliefs, which she promotes to her followers. Here are several examples. Romana has declared herself to be the Queen of Canada, Commander-in-Chief, and the Head of State of Government. According to Romana, she was able to obtain this job promotion because Queen Elizabeth II was executed, and the United States military decided to appoint Romana as Queen of Canada. On at least one occasion, Romana declared herself to be leader of the world. So, a big step up. She went from Queen of Canada to Queen of the World. To promote her bizarre beliefs, Romana and some of her dedicated followers drive around Canada in a group of recreational vehicles. Wherever her RV is parked is the capital of Canada at that time. It's like a mobile palace. In addition to her many leadership credentials, Romana claims to be an alien who possesses supernatural abilities. She is willing to help people on Earth by supplying them with advanced alien medical chambers, which can be used to grow organs and limbs, cure medical illnesses, and reverse aging. Romana believes that the government has no control over citizens. This is like the sovereign citizen movement. I find this to be a curious belief considering her other claims. She has proclaimed herself to be the Queen of Canada, but at the same time is saying that leaders don't have power over citizens. Doesn't sound like she thought that one through. Really, it doesn't sound like she's thought anything through. Romana claims to be waging a secret war against leaders like Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau. She claims that these leaders are part of a group that harm children. This, of course, sounds like the QAnon conspiracy theory. As a side note, I'm not sure how secret the war is if she plainly stated it in public. Romana is not a big fan of efforts to treat COVID-19. She has sent fraudulent cease and desist orders to various politicians, healthcare workers, and media outlets, demanding they immediately refrain from providing vaccinations and other health-related activities in connection with COVID-19. Romana believes that the vaccine restructures the DNA of human beings, which transforms them into robots that can be controlled. This can be countered by listening to sounds transmitted at designated frequencies. In an effort to help her followers, Romana made a number of royal decrees, which she posted on her Telegram page. Here are a few examples. Critical race theory is illegal in Canada, Income taxes are abolished. Electricity in Canada is free. Water bills are illegal. This could lead to some interesting new charges like possession with the intent to invoice. Victoria is now the capital of Canada when the Queen is not in her RV. Publishing slanderous articles about the Queen is punishable by a 30-year prison sentence. The prices of housing, rent, and propane have been reverted to 1955 levels. So, electricity is free, but propane is only discounted? Also, what if a person was a homeowner? The queen just annihilated their equity. Some of the queen's followers stopped paying their utility bills, but they ran into a problem they never could have predicted. Their utilities were disconnected. Some of the queen's decrees are not as controversial. For example, those designed to lower speed limits or improve the popularity of back alley rollerblading. I can just picture some follower of the queen nodding his head in agreement with all the decrees until getting to that back alley rollerblading one. 
At that point, he just throws up his hands and says, People don't rollerblade in alleys. Now I know you're not the queen. How gullible do you think I am? Interestingly, Romana did upset some of her followers with a decree changing the age of consent in Canada to 24 years old. Some of her followers are probably challenged in the area of romance already and felt as though they didn't need any more restrictions. According to Romana, she is exceptionally wealthy. She has billions of dollars stored in Vatican City. I find it curious that she keeps asking for donations to pay for her $65,000 RV. I guess she lost the key to the safe in the Vatican where the billions of dollars are stored. Maybe she kept it next to her water bill. The good news is that with those age-reversing medical chambers, she has all the time in the world to find the key. Romana has called for violence on occasion, although she appears to have backed away from those positions. In one post, she said that four genetically modified super soldiers were being pulled from cold storage to destroy her enemies. The super soldiers were created by mixing the DNA of Filipinos and white rappers to create the strongest race known to man. They possess life force and power never seen before on the planet. Also, I imagine that at a moment's notice, they are up for a rap battle when they are not blowing up enemies of the queen, that is. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On August 13, 2022, Romano led a number of protesters who were assembled at a police station in Peterborough, Ontario. The protesters walked up to the police station and tried to gain entry so they could use their powers of citizen's arrest to place the police officers under arrest. The plan fell apart when they realized that the door to the police station was locked. They knocked on the door, yelled, and used a megaphone to demand that the police officers come outside to be arrested. When that didn't work, they called 911 and made the same demand. The police decided not to respond to the emergency call. After waiting for a few hours, the protesters wandered around the police station looking for another way to make entry. They entered an area where the police vehicles were stored and confronted officers who were arriving for their shift. They approached an off-duty police officer in a vehicle and said, we're placing you under arrest. Some people did get arrested, but they were not the police officers. Three protesters were arrested. They received charges like mischief, resisting arrest, and assaulting police. In response to her protesters being arrested, Romano wasn't exactly supportive. She wrote, quote, A gentle reminder that Her Royal Majesty Queen Romana de Dulo, Commander-in-Chief and Queen of the Kingdom of Canada, was in Peterborough, Ontario yesterday as an observer, not participant, unquote. I think that the Queen needs to shorten her title bit if she ever wants to fit it on business cards. Romana did not completely abandon her supporters. For example, she called upon allied countries to aid in her efforts against the Peterborough police. I'm sure the protesters who were arrested feel much better after seeing how the Queen of Canada fought for them so valiantly. Romana was not discouraged by the arrests. She implied that she may try again, but this time she needs to have thousands of people. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Romana appears to have assembled the elements of multiple conspiracy theories into one confusing and contradictory belief system. There are elements of the sovereign citizen movement, like not paying bills and sending out phony cease and desist letters. There is clearly a QAnon influence, like believing that evil politicians are trying to harm children. And it sounds as though she included a little bit of the alien lizard humanoid conspiracy theory, like she is an alien humanoid who became queen of Canada. Item number two, in the midst of all these bizarre claims, one thing is very clear with Romana, and that is how to send her money. She is concerned because people are impersonating her to gather donations, which is ironic because they are impersonating an impersonator, but either way, this worries her because she's afraid that she will not receive donations intended for her. She has issued clear instructions repeatedly on how to send money to the genuine Queen of Canada. I find it curious how all these bizarre references disappear when it's time to issue donation instructions. Item number three, people who believe in conspiracy theories like sovereign citizens and QAnon are often thought of as politically extreme. So members of one political party 
will try to discredit their rivals by pointing out the behavior of these conspiracy theorists. This is somehow supposed to prove that the opposing political ideology is not rational, or that every member of the party is close to going over the edge as far as their beliefs. Somehow the bizarre beliefs represent an extension or the purest form of the ideology. In reality, I don't think this is the case. I think most of the more extreme conspiratorial beliefs can be explained by mental health factors. Clearly, many of the people have paranoia, delusions, and difficulty with critical thinking. They embrace conspiracy theories that are incompatible with one another. For example, how can the anti-government sovereign citizen movement be compatible with a queen who rules Canada or rules the entire world? Sovereign citizens don't recognize any form of leadership at all. In looking at the QAnon component, we run into the same problem. QAnon followers believe Donald Trump will conquer all evildoers. Is he then going to have to fight with the Queen of Canada for control of the world? What's he going to do about her four super soldiers? Will he create his own using more talented rappers? It's like these conspiracy theorists are not really thinking about the long run. Item number four. Some people have suggested that Romana has formed a cult. I think one could argue that she has constructed the foundation for a cult, but her efforts are not really organized enough to fully qualify as a cult. Conspiratorial beliefs and cults fit together pretty well. Many cults are based on bizarre beliefs. Some people join cults because they are disenfranchised. They are looking for a way to isolate from society, and they want to be with other people who share their unusual or bizarre beliefs. They don't necessarily have a strong desire to interact with society. For example, Saul Newton, Amy Carlson, Marshall Applewhite, or the Source family. These cults were destructive and even lethal in some instances, but they didn't have a grand scheme to take over the world. Other people are motivated to join a cult because it puts them on a team and it protects them from perceived dangers. Their paranoia drives them to seek the safety that only a group of like-minded people could provide. They're willing to tolerate the oppression of a cult leader in order to obtain the protection. They actually think of the cult leader as in a battle with them against evil forces, like the cult leader is going to lead them to victory. Examples of this mentality include Jim Jones, David Koresh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, and Bhagwan Rajneesh. It appears as though the followers of Ramana tend to have the more interactive mentality, like they want to join a team and make changes to the world. It's not about isolating, it's about making contact. Unfortunately, this can lead to danger. Not just people having their electricity shut off or being arrested for minor crimes, but severe consequences. If the Queen of Canada is trying to form a cult, law enforcement needs to keep close watch on her activity, assuming, of course, she does not use her power of invisibility. Now moving to my final thoughts. Sometimes when a new cult leader or aspiring cult leader arrives on the scene, it is painfully clear that becoming a cult leader does not require any special talent or ability. Cult leaders from years ago had to be charismatic, hardworking, persuasive, and manipulative. Modern cult leaders don't have to do anything except pick a few random beliefs that are not even compatible with one another. With the advent of social media, a person who would otherwise be dismissed as nonsensical can attract a small but loyal following. Romana gives her followers bad advice, doesn't support her followers when they get in trouble for listening to her, repeatedly asks for money, and doesn't even have a compound, at least not one that is stationary. It's frightening to consider that people are just an RV and a few social media accounts away from being queen of the world. Those are my thoughts on the case of Romana Dadulo. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as an invisible mobile palace that grants immortality and free electricity. Thanks for watching.